Hello, everyone. This is Culture Comms and Cocktails, the podcast with internal comms served straight up. I'm your host, Chuck Go, Senior Strategic Advisor at Social Chorus. And on this episode of Culture Comms and Cocktails, we have Kristen Cronin, Administrative Vice President for Employee Communications at m and Bank and Charcuterie Artist, which we'll get to that at the end. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the podcast, Kristen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm coming to you live from snowy Buffalo, New York. It's very cold here, but excited to be on. Thanks. And it's nice to meet you. That's my one charcuterie pun that I'm going to throw in <laughs> for, for, the, for the whole podcast. And then we can get into the rest of it a little <laughs> bit later. Uh, I mentioned that you are at m and Bank. Uh, describe to us a little bit about the role, your career progression, and something about m and Bank for people that may not be familiar with the company. Yeah, so I have been in m and for seven and a half years, and I grew up in marketing communication agency lifestyle. So when I came over to m and it, it was a little bit of a culture shock. Um, we're a community bank. We um, are in seven different markets across the East Coast, and I, my first task was to work on online and mobile banking and to sell the idea of doing a tablet app to the executives at the bank. So when I first got there, I looked around the table, I'm ready to present this awesome idea of doing a tablet app for our customers. And I recognize that the, that the executives are using BlackBerry. So I'm pretty sure M&T was one of like the only companies at the time still on BlackBerry. And I recognized at that point that it was going to be really hard for me to, to be successful in this role if I don't help get them off of, of that technology. So I ended up going into technology and started a employee mobility group, which was focused around getting the right tools and technology into our employees' hands. And we believe that that was really important for us to create a better customer experience. So throughout my, my career at M&T, having the employee experience at the center of everything that we do has really been at, at the heart um, in my passion. And as I sort of navigated through technology, I went back into digital banking. I helped launch Zelle. Um, so we, we did end up um, creating a much better experience for our customers when it came to mobile. But the, the challenge with that was we recognized that a lot of our frontline employees, so if you walked into an M&T branch, and you pulled out your phone and you asked them a question about mobile, they really were disconnected to what we were doing online. Um, so I created a digital ambassador program to help explain and train our employees on the digital offerings so that they could then you know, provide that to customers. And I recognized that there was a really large disconnect at the bank with all the different initiatives and all the things that were going on and what our employees actually knew about them. So at the time I was asked to help communicate some of these initiatives and a podcast was thrown around and I decided I was going to create a podcast um, designed for our employees to feel connected and empowered to all these things that were going on across the bank. So um, I started our internal podcast called Meet and Talk off the side of my desk while I was in digital banking and it started to organically grow. And one of the biggest challenges that we had was that the, we didn't have a platform for things like video, podcast, for all these great stories to be told, we didn't have a platform um, that was suitable. So we were on a 2010 platform. I called um, the head of our internal communications at the time and I said, you know, I, I think I have this, this thing, this channel that's really catching on and I don't have a great way to display it to our employees. Um, do you mind if I come into your group and revamp our entire intranet and the way that, that we communicate? Um, so the, the role was drawn up. Uh, I moved over into internal communications and I'm now our internal communication product owner. And we just recently launched Community One, which is through Social Chorus, and it's really helped transform our communication. So listening to you talk through all that, is there anything you haven't done at the bank? Um, financial banking things. <laughs> So, I mean, that was really, that was the, the culture shock, right? I, I don't have a background in finance. I, my background is in communication. And I think it took me a while to recognize how important communication really is um, to a large institution, especially a financial institution, um, making sure that there is that human element to the data and analysis that, that is going on. And I loved hearing you link the customer experience with employee experience. I think sometimes those tend to be very, very separate. So why was it so important for M&T Bank 
to invest in the digital employee experience, you know, company right alongside that customer experience? You know, I'm a big believer that you have to love yourself before you love others. And I, I feel the same way about the employees at the bank, right? Like we have to love them and make sure that they have the right tools, the right technology, the right access to information so that they can then love our customers just as much. And we, you know, we love our customers. I think that's one of the best things about m and is the relationships mm-hmm. that we build with our communities. And if you're utilizing, if you can't access something on a mobile phone, or if you're not privy to information that might be happening at our headquarters or somewhere else, like you, you're missing out on an opportunity to really give that experience to our customers. So as I looked around and saw all these incredible initiatives happening, I recognized how little was known about it across the 17,000 employees. So I needed to find a way to help connect them. And again, I think um, putting it into their hands and making it, uh, making it easy for them to digest and, and understand was, was incredibly important. And the technology had a lot to do with that. And with the launch of Community One, in a previous conversation, you used these words that it, you said it has transformed employee communications there at, at Community One. We're going we're gonna to dig into each of these separately, but high level talk through how are all the ways that, that employee communications is now different at m Bank? So I think in the past, we really led with the what and not with the why. And it was very corporate, sanitized way of communicating. And, I'll, you know, the, the platform itself, like I said, was on a 2010 platform. We re- relied a lot on email. And we have 35 communicators, embedded communicators across the bank. So that's a lot of people that are charged with making sure that, the, that their division is up to date on what's happening. So I think with Community One, what it did is not only gave us the ability to centralize a lot of the communications into one space, but it allowed us to be more consistent. It allowed us to to have our communicators think more creatively and engaging, like they can create more engaging content now. They can think in the form of an article or in the form of a, a video or in the form of a podcast because the platform will allow them to display it in that way and makes it really easy for them to do so. So now we can create this sort of um, you know, ability to proactively get information instead of just constantly pushing it out to them. And they can, they can customize it, right? So think about all the different 35 different communicators, all this communication coming at you, you can now pick and choose the things that are most important to you. And I think that made a huge difference in, in the way that we as communicators think about, you know, the delivery. You had mentioned 35 <laughs> communicators being a part of this. Uh, we often don't talk a lot about governance on on the podcast. So some people might get really excited about hearing, wow, like 35 communicators out there. But at times, as you mentioned, you've got now 35 creators out there. So how did you begin structuring where they published, how they published, knowing you've got 35 other communicators out there wanting to create content? Yeah, but so we started this integrated community, communicator community. And that was pulling, first of all, we were dispersed across the organization. A lot of us didn't, um, we, we met within our own divisions and not together as a cohesive group. So we started pulling people together throughout the community one launch and effort to bring them along, to get their feedback, to make sure that the system itself was going to deliver on the things that they needed to communicate. So pulling everyone together was the first step. The second step was sharing best practices and putting some guidelines and governance around what's working and what's not. So I think what's been really interesting and fun, and again, giving this, giving them this landscape to be able to play and create, um, ha- we've seen really great things come out of it. So we had one, um, our technology group, as an example, they did a giveaway. So if you followed their channel, um, you were entered to win like a, a backpack or something along those lines. So it was a really great, fun, engaging way to leverage the platform and to gain followers. So we brought that to the communicator group to say, hey, here's a great way for you to start thinking about your channels and to start bringing people in on. Um, we've also been working really hard on a channel strategy. To, so we've been um, focusing on the key themes that we want to communicate as an enterprise. And we've been trying to align our channels and align our communicators to start thinking through ways that they can bring stories to life and bring these initiatives to life so you, utilizing Community One. So we've created some structure, some guidelines around it, some best practices. Um, Social Course, I think, has done a great job of 
showing up, giving us um, ideas. Like if we bring to them, like, hey, how can we do this? Social course comes back to us saying, here are five ways that you can leverage this platform to its fullest extent. Fullest extent. Um, and that's really helped us, you know, put some structure around what we're doing. And, and then with, with so many different endpoints available, we have customers who, who love the email part and the web experience part, or, oh, we already have an internet, we're putting content amplifiers in that part. You had in previous conversation mentioned mobile being so crucial and beneficial to MNT Bank. Why, why that? Why that one endpoint for the organization? We really have, have not had anything employee related mobile. What are, we do have like our HR platform that was probably one of the first that came out as a mobile off network application. So mobile for us has always been a challenge, especially when we're even like reading emails or um, viewing a video, you know, it was, it was something that always had to be done on desktop. And when I thought about the podcast, people don't typically consume podcasts on a computer. Some people do, but most people are listening to it on Apple podcasts or from their phone or while they're driving, while they're running, while they're eating lunch. So it was really important for us to give content and deliver content in a space that people typically utilize. So our mo we've been really trying to push mobile app. It's definitely a change of behavior. I don't think a lot of people are used to having that ability to access something off network in a creative, engaging way. Um, so this has really been the first time that we, you've been able to watch a video or listen to a podcast from your phone that's internal, internally focused. Um, it's also really helped us with our sharing. So we've been really encouraging sharing the incredible stories that are that we're now highlighting across the bank onto social platforms. So when you're using something like the mobile app, it makes it really easy for you to share a story to LinkedIn or to share it to your Facebook or your Instagram and really showcase and show off the culture and community that MT MT is. And then with that that company advocacy element of it, the First time I crossed paths with you was seeing you share something from Community One on on LinkedIn. Are you starting to get a sense for what employees like sharing that, that the team is creating? And what is also not Bill's Mafia or Buffalo Bill's related that they that they like sharing in the like, I was gonna say what that do you every... get excited about. <laughs> We do a lot around, we did a lot around, so we were, we have the Ravens as well. So we're in Baltimore, um, we're the sponsor of uh, the m and Bank Stadium in Baltimore. So we had a, a Ravens versus Bills sort of thing going on when they were both in the playoffs. But um, we, we have a channel called Your Voices. So a colleague of mine had started that up and, you know, it really features very personal um, blogs of our employees. And that those, whenever we feature anything like that, they'll get over a hundred likes and comments because I think people, you know, first of all, we're all dispersed, right? We're working from home now. It's really hard to make those personal connections. And having these blogs has been really great to get to know your colleagues better, um, get to know something about them that you may not have known before, maybe learn something from them. So we find that those are probably the most um, engage, we find the most engagement when we're featuring a blog about an employee. Um, the sharing aspect, though, I think anytime we do any video or anytime we do podcasts, like people love listening and, and seeing those things. Um, so we found a lot of engagement if we share those externally as well. And then, you know, when we think about all the, 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 all the different types of content you're creating. You had mentioned this podcast, which we'd be remiss on a podcast not to talk about your, your podcast. Why do you think that particular form of content has been so successful with the employees at m and Bank? Is it, is it the novelty of it? Or is it, this is, a, this is just a brand new way that the company is communicating with them? I think what I been doing is just giving amplifying voices that may not have been heard before. So that's the first thing. And then the opposite end of the spectrum, it's giving people access to our executives that in a, in a way that they may, may never have seen before. So it's almost humanizing, um, you know, our president, our CEO, our office of the chair. Um, I'm asking them personal questions. I'm asking them, I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper into the major strategic things that are happening so that um, you know, that, that frontline employee that's, that's making a difference for our customers truly feels connected and, and understands strategically what we're trying to accomplish. Because again, I think it's all related. So I think, um, you know, hearing voices, hearing all the different voices across the bank, 
being feeling more connected to our strategy has, and the podcast allows me to do that because I'm able to interview them in a way that, um, that highlights and showcases that information. So I think that's why it stuck. I'm I'm obviously very biased on the topic as we're here recording a podcast, because I think it, it gives organizations a chance to go so much deeper into topics and deeper in the strategy. And I loved your comparison of, of, or use of the words, other voices, new voices, or perhaps it's more localized voices, people that they maybe only seen their picture before and just hearing that person's voice adds depth to it. So certainly I, I love encouraging employees or, or communicators to do podcasts for employees and I applaud your success on it. Thank you. I also really like getting them involved. So I, I reach out to them frequently for feedback, um, for questions, for people they want to hear from. You know, I, it's for them. So I, I think what uh, Community One has allowed us to do is as I post the podcast, I now have access to comments for people to share what they think, for people to say, hey, you know, I wish you would have asked this question or, hey, can we hear from this person? And I deliver on that. So I've created almost this community of followers that now can, um, I'm, I'm like the conduit between the people of the bank and the executives of the bank and, and you know, being able to amplify those voices has been incredible. Yeah, anytime you can have your listeners set your editorial calendar for you is, <laughs> yeah. is a big win. That's a big win. Yeah. Um, totally. next, thing, next thing I wanna to talk to you about, and, and, and we sort of touched on this topic, but I wanna go deeper into it. You know, I've seen and other past guests on this podcast have talked about how the, the meaning behind their program, what started out as a news and information app or news and information program became more of a sense of community or that's what they wanted out of their platform. And given that yours is called Community One, the irony is not lost on me, but is that you think what people were seeking during this pandemic at MT Bank to, to get a better sense? Because obviously you, I mean, you had some employees on the front lines of this at, at banks adjusting to new procedures and weird customer interactions. As someone who's had to go into a bank recently, it's different now going in going into a bank, especially with those frontline employees. So what have you seen them wanting to get out of community one now? Yeah, I, 100%. We actually signed the contract, I think March 31st. It was unbelievable. Like that to me showed a lot about um, where our leadership was at when it came to connecting our, our employees and the importance of communication during this time. So because we, we all shut down, a lot of us wouldn't to work from home. Um, we needed that source of community. We need to feel connected to something. And I think we needed transparent communication from our leadership to the bank. And Community One allowed us to share, be transparent. It allowed us to, you know, pull our employees and see how they were feeling. It allowed us to um, highlight the incredible efforts that our essential employees were, you know, the, the, you know, when you think about PPP and business banking and helping small businesses, there were some incredible things happening um, that we wanted our, the rest of our employees to be privy to and to congratulate and to like, you know, encourage. Um, so community one was essential in allowing us to, to bring those stories to life and essential into making sure that people were on the same page, that people knew where we were at um, when it came to going back to the office, when, you know, these major critical topics were coming up, we were able to leverage community one to share the information. Um, so it came at I, the, the most perfect time um, and, and really helped us pull us all together and make us feel connected. Yeah, we, we've certainly had uh, several customers come back with the what ifs, like what if we hadn't had this program in place? What, what would we have done? And, and silly me, when I was using that banking example, I was only thinking about it from the consumer side, obviously, because that's what I live in. I didn't thought about the, the small business and the banking side and the, the payroll protection program and all these other things that were so critical to keeping some communities alive and thinking that, you know, these, your employees there were at the forefront of all that great work. So we talked about the pandemic. One of these days, Kristen, we're gonna be out of this pandemic. Let's, it, it has to happen. So how do you see Community One continuing to transform communication there? You're locked into the podcast. You can't let your fans down on the podcast. But what are some other ways that you see this continuing to grow inside m and Bank? So again, I think getting our communicators officially all on board um, we're still slow rolling into that. 
Um, so making sure that all of our divisions have a channel, um, really trying to find ways to, to encourage the enterprise level communications, but also the divisional specific communication. So one of the, the challenges that we're working through is um, filtering fun, engaging things like you know, user generated content from the super critical information that you know, a rate has changed you know, and somebody needs to know that. And that can't get lost in the feed of you know, ugly sweaters when we had like an ugly sweater holiday cup test. So we're, we're really feeling through like, how do we parse out that information? How do we make sure that everyone truly understands how to utilize the system? And then the, the other half of it is um, revamping our intranet. So that's where we're feeling like all the resources are going to be living. So we're in the process of doing that too and sort of converging the two spaces together. Um, I also am really seeing the use of video becoming more and more important. Uh, we're really going video first. So I think um, we'll be spending a lot of time leveraging Community One to help us, um, again, tell these stories in, in really fun, engaging ways. Um, and then as we work through our channel strategy, as we get everybody on board, I think we're actually our, I wanna say we're up to 16,000 out of the 17,000 employees enrolled in Community One. So that was really surprising for us. I think we, we, were, we weren't expecting every, almost every employee to be engaged in this, but we've been able to really um, make it that central space. Uh, so I've been really impressed with that too. So we'll continue to try to get them not only registered and enrolled, but actually very incredibly active on it as well. Well, I think that that speaks volumes there that obviously during the pandemic, this is exactly what your employees were wanting out of a platform. You and the team there delivered it. So congratulations uh, to everyone there. The podcast is called Culture, Comms, and Cocktails, but I feel like now the podcast is Culture, Comms, and Charcuterie. So now we're going to merge these two things. Apparently, Kristen, you are a famous Buffalo charcuterie artist, as I'm seeing on LinkedIn. I want to ask you, where did this interest and now passion come from with doing charcuterie? Yeah, so this was like a quarantine boredom. I have two kids. I have an eight-year-old and a three-year-old. And it was just a random Saturday. Um, I took our, our pancakes, bacon, fruit, breakfast, and I arranged it into a themed board. And I posted the photo on Instagram, and it just got a ton of attention. And I, I didn't realize that it would. but I And I also didn't realize how much joy I found in doing it. Um, so I started doing it more often. I ended up creating a dedicated Instagram account to my charcuterie creations. I started going into meat and cheese. Um, and then people were offering to pay me to do it for their events. So, hey, can you come and do a breakfast board for my, you know, my bridesmaids who are getting ready? So it wasn't until then that I realized, wow, this could, this could actually be a thing. Um, and then Shay's Performing Arts within our community, they reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing a virtual charcuterie class that benefit the community. And I said, yes, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Um, so I did this class. We had 54 people register. Um, Shays, we ended up donating a lot to the theater. Um, people really enjoyed it. And I evolved the business into creating these um, private and public virtual charcuterie classes. So that sort of, it shifted from, um, you know, I still provide like a menu of, of charcuterie that you can order but I really started doing the classes and I think that's where it's going to continue to grow. Um, but it's been really like this fun passion that turned into, into a full-blown business. And I'm really excited about it. Well, I've been in the meat and cheese my entire life, Kristen. And I, I haven't <laughs> thought of turning that into, into charcuterie. I, I was trying to impress you in a previous conversation about my very limited charcuterie knowledge in that I saw that people were creating jarcuterie by doing them in these little jars. And you raised the bar up by telling me about, uh, was it sharp fluteries? Sharp do fluteries, yeah. So champagne, champagne flute. flutes, <laughs> just way fancier than jars, by the way. But yes. for those to, to swing us back to the cocktail theme, what sort of charcuterie cocktail recommendation do you have for everyone? So um, cheese always pairs best with wine. Um, and I've actually partnered with a, a local liquor store. They do virtual wine tastings and I provide um, individual charcuterie boxes that pair with the wine. So they have a sommelier that will tell me like, you know, these are the different wines, here are the different flavors. Can you create something that will go well with it? Um, so, 
you know, I'm, I'm personally like a gin and tonic, you know, vodka girl, but um, I've, I've become more interested in trying to find flavors that pair really well with wine. So anything white like Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay, that will go with your soft cheeses, um, like a, a brie or a camembert. And then as you go down like Pinot Noir, like your red wines, Cabernet Sauvignon, you'll go with like more hard cheeses. So aged cheddar and Gouda. Um, and then sparkling, if you're into sparkling wine, champagne, um, that usually par pairs really well with like the blue cheeses or um, like the Parmesan cheeses. So I've been, I've been learning a lot from the sommelier because again, it can't just look good. It has to taste good. All the flavors have to go really well together. So I've been um, trying to educate myself. There's actually a book called The Flavor Thesaurus. If you like cooking just in general, I highly recommend this book. It has a flavor wheel that will tell you um, all different like interesting things that pair really well together. So I've been upping my my flavor game using that book. <laughs> what what I heard, Kristen, is that we need all the meats, all the cheeses, all the wines, all together. Uh, I'm now thinking we need some culture cons and cocktails and charcuterie virtual event for listeners of some kind to, to make this I'm happen. In. <laughs> Um, well, always, Chris, and I love people following their passions, especially amazing to see this one happen during a difficult time for everyone. You're getting joy um, out of doing that additional work. Again, congratulations for all your success, personal success and organizational success at m and Bank with Community One. And thank you for being on the podcast. And thank you so much for having me. And thank you to Social Chorus for transforming our the way we communicate. It has meant the world to us. So thank you so much. The partnership has been great. That's our job, Kristen. That's our job. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you enjoyed what you heard from this episode and want to check out others, find Culture Comes and Cocktails on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen. And when you do, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. This has been Culture Comes and Cocktails, internal comms served straight up. Thanks for listening.